Der Schwurdeskern an der Hansa Park in Sirksdorf, Northern Germany, is a massive, very unique infinity coaster from Gerstlauer with a vertical lift hill and a 219 foot tall vertical twisted drop inside a big tower, and a mostly low to the ground layout with extreme direction changes, sharp airtime hills, and intense turns. The ride is 4051 foot long, 78 miles per hour fast, and with a height of 239 foot, technically a hypercoaster. Also, the coaster features three trains, one inversion, an incredible soundtrack by Almascore, many surprises, and it's a very polarizing coaster because some people love it, others think the ride is rough, many people think it's one of the most intense coasters ever, while Hansa Park is advertising the ride as a family thrill ride. So, is the ride rough, overrated, underrated, and is it a family coaster or not? Here's my opinion on Gerstlauer's tallest roller coaster. Der Spur des Kernan. Hüte dich vor seinem Bann. Where do I even start? There's much to talk about. First of all, the coaster is massive. You can even see the coaster from the highway together with Highlander, their Funtime Gyro Drop Tower and the Observation Tower. The skyline of Hansa Park is beautiful. And even in the park, there's no spot where you can't see Kernan. Kernan is located in the back of the park on the left side. But because Hansa Park is not that huge, the low to the ground section is nearly right at the entrance, only behind Highlander and Nessie. And if you're on Highlander, you can see that Kernan takes up a good part of Hansa Park. Also on Highlander, you're taller than Kernan, which is very weird because it's the tallest roller coaster in Germany and you can just look down to this coaster. The quickest way to get to the entrance is the left path right next to Nessie and Highlander. First, you come to the low to the ground section of Kernan, and the part looks beautiful. Beautiful twisted green track, perfectly built into the park. And it's especially great if you see Kernan the first time this close to you, because the roller coaster track is every time bigger than you think. The area around Kernan is awesome, because some pathways are directly under the hard element. They are just there and you could climb up to the track, but don't do that. The entrance to Kernan is a tiny building with a test seat and a logo attached to the top. Also, the logo is surrounded by two lions, on the left and on the right, which looks very cool. And you're right under the hard element, surrounded by this forest of supports, which makes for some great off-ride shots. I took way too many from this perspective, and I'm sure you will also. You can divide the queue line into two parts, the outdoor and the indoor parts. The first part of the queue line is the outdoor part, and it's not that well themed, but it doesn't matter, because the part is located right next to the first drop, and even under the exit of the tower. And fun fact, the track doesn't actually exit the tower straight, but slightly to the right. And you can also touch the tower. And second fun fact, this tower actually used to look like this at first, until the theming was finished in 2017. Then the queue line takes you on top of a roof, which looks also very pretty. Then there are also a few screens, which show trailers and the story of Kernan. And then, after a few more screens and a few stairs down, you enter the second part of the queue line. And even though I've ridden Kernan 18 times now, I sadly, because of Corona didn't get the chance to see the q by myself, which is really sad because I've heard that the q is epic. You walk through different themed rooms with a few good effects. Like in one room, there are letters flying to a big throne. Very epic. Then after you've left your stuff, you enter the band room. What's very unique about this coaster is that you can choose your row. There's no write-up who assigns you to a row, it's impossible to predict, the band room does it for you. It's a well-themed small round room with four rows, each consisting of four places to stand. The exact amount of people for a full train. Then after the soundtrack starts playing, a random row and a random door close up. There are four doors, each leading to one of the four rows on Kernan's trains. So you could get the front row as the last remaining row, but you could also get the third or second row with the first assignment. Most people think that the first row is the best row on Kernan, and even though the front is awesome, especially for the feeling of speed, I actually prefer the very last row, for better airtime on every spot, especially on the first drop. And I actually think that the ride is a little bit smoother in the last row. But that also could be the train's fault. Because one of the three trains is a little bit rougher than the other two, but I sadly don't know which train it is. The second row is definitely the worst one, and the third is okay, but the best are front and especially back. The station is quite dark and looks cool, but before we get to the right experience, let's look at Kernan's story. The Tower of Kernan is actually based on another tower you can find in Helsingborg, Sweden. The Cannon Tower at Hansa Park is actually more than twice as tall as the original one. After the death of his father, Erik Menwert was crowned the new king of Denmark at the age of just 12. But unlike a good king, he only lived his life without caring for his nation, which brought him many enemies. Out of fear he could be dethroned, he forced the old builder to build an unconquerable fortress. When the old builder was finished, he confessed that the cannon could only be made invincible by a protective spell. 
and that their effect was great, but the price even greater. Thinking only of the invincibility, King Eric unrolled the parchment and spoke the protective formula over the tower. Thus, the old master builder had achieved what he had planned. The king's spirit was eternally banished into the cannon and could only be freed by an act of kindness that Eric Manwert never accomplished during his lifetime. This was many many years ago and nowadays you are a visitor in the Cannon Museum exploring the myths around Cannon. This is in my opinion an awesome story and the coaster also features an epic over 20 minute long soundtrack by Imascore. Cannon's trains are very pretty and especially comfortable. Luckily it's one of the newer infinity coasters with lap bars and even though they come down during the ride, you are very free while riding. Those lap bars are awesome. What's also awesome is the dispatch. The soundtrack starts playing and you take a left hand turn out of the station. Also two lights start to flicker before turning off and then you are in complete darkness. Then you enter a small drop still in complete darkness. The drop is not that special but gives a little pop of weightlessness in the third and fourth row. And very funny, even though this is considered the first drop, technically the first drop is this tiny one. But whatever, next you enter an unbanked curve which feels exactly like a mouse curve. And the next element is the 239 foot tall vertical chain lift. Also in the evening when the lights are on, you can see the hardening roll above you and the cannon tower from the inside. The vertical lift hill is very comfortable and looks very tall especially on your first ride. And what's really scary is that because of the vertical position you slide a little deeper into your seat and if you had much room between you and your leper in the station you now have incredible much room. It feels like you're gonna fall out but trust me you won't fall. And don't staple yourself because you need room for the drop and the first rally will staple you automatically. At first you get lifted upwards to a height of like 210 feet and then you come to a complete stop. And let me tell you, the atmosphere in the tower is incredible. There are no words to describe how epic the tower is. Then King Eric Manward appears above you and says, see what he made of me. As a shadow of myself I'm trapped on these walls and cannot leave the cannon. You are not safe for the next 1000 years. I swear that to all holy men. Right after these words you suddenly drop backwards down the lift. And if you don't know about the surprise, this is terrifying and I'm always scared the brakes couldn't work, but they are magnetic brakes so they will always slow you down. Then you stop for a few seconds and the most epic part of the soundtrack starts playing. And that atmosphere man. Then you ascend the lift till the second time, the soundtrack is still playing and at the top you hear the off of Kernan be aware of his spell, obviously in German. And then you drop 219 foot at a vertical angle down out of the tower. And this drop is fantastic. You got not as strong airtime as on Expedition GeForce, but on this drop you get this damage dropping feeling and in the back the airtime is still very strong. Definitely a back row element and the twist is also fun. Then you shoot out of the tower into the first big valley and it's sadly not that smooth. It's not jackhammering and I don't mind it that much but some do and it's definitely not that comfortable. This valley is also intense. It's not that intense as some people make it out to be, like I didn't grade out on any of my rides but it's still in no way a family coaster. And then you rise up into this like non-inverting C7 roll. Most people call it the hard element of Kernan. But whatever, this element gives in the morning not that strong airtime, but in the evening you get ejector airtime mixed with a few laterals. The first part is better up front and the twisting drop is better in the back and an awesome element. Oh, and you get great views of the ocean and the surrounding area. And all in all, I really really like this element. The valley afterwards is also not the smoothest, but smoother than the first one. I don't anymore have a huge problem with them. The first of two stangle dives following features at first nice positive G's and then very strong laterals. All this with only a lap bar. To my knowledge is the highest amount of lateral G-force on any roller coaster with lap bars. Great moment and one of my highlights. And it's especially great on a left outside seat when you lean yourself to the right. The second stangle dive is not as whippy as the first one, but you still get some mild laterals and you're very fast by this point. And the second stangle dive looks beautiful. Next is a decently forceful long turn leading into two direction changes. And those direction changes are sadly not nearly as whippy as the stangle dive. They definitely would be better with an extremer shaping, but they are still fun because you're going so fast. Next is an intense turnaround leading into a sharp air terminal. This curve features the in my opinion strongest positive g-forces and it's a great moment. The air terminal after the turn is also great. You get nice ejector air time throughout the whole train, in the morning not as strong, but in the evening very strong. The next part of the ride till the second air time hill right before the final break run is not that special and kind of a dead spot. You still get some floater air time, some positive G's and some mild laterals, but this part is definitely not on the level of Canon's other elements. 
The last airtime mill features not as strong airtime as the first one, but still very good airtime. Then you get smoothly slowed down by magnetic brakes, but your ride isn't over yet. Inside the building you enter the ride's only inversion, a hard lane roll, and you take the hard lane roll very slow. Great tank time and after another mouse curve in darkness you enter the real final brake run. And this is the point where your on ride photo gets taken. And yeah, in my opinion not the best point. I would put the photo point on the first drop, because in the final brake run your adrenaline is not anymore rushing because of the slow ending. But it's still epic because there are 4 light flashes and the soundtrack starts playing again. And in the final right hand turn into the station you can see a glowing banner and you somehow survive the Schwodeskerner. The exit takes you into the souvenir shop, where you can buy the best on ride photos ever and much other merch. And by the way I have a Canon cup and a very cool Canon shirt. Then you can leave the shop and like I get right back in line. I've now spent 4 full days at Hansa Park, 1 in summer of 2020 and 3 in the autumn festival of 2021. And my opinion after 18 rides now is actually very different than after only 4 rides in 2020. After my 4 rides in 2020 I thought that the ride was very overrated and I still loved it but I had a big problem with the roughness. Now after 18 rides I like Canon actually a little bit more than Expedition GeForce and it's my new number one. I also don't mind the roughness that much anymore and I also finally got the front like 4 times. In 2020 the band room put me 3 times in the third row and 1 time in the back. So the band room can be a hit or miss with you but I overall like the band room because first the band room is very epic and unique, second because of the band room the front doesn't get a huge line and third when you get put in the front or in the back it's a very victorious moment. But even though it's definitely one of Europe's best roller coasters, if you ride this coaster with sky high expectations, the ride maybe won't deliver. Pros and cons. The first pro are the trains. You only have those lip bars and the trains look also very pretty. The first con is the roughness. The first two valleys are like I've said very readily and the whole terrain part at the end is shaky and even though I don't mind it, some people don't like this ride only because of the roughness. So yeah, it's a con. The second pro is the intensity. I don't grey it out of any of my rides, but my friend did and I also know many people who had the grey out too. And it's very intense, not a family coaster. The second con is in my opinion biggest, the capacity. It really takes its time for a train to complete the whole action in the tower. Some people don't like the back rides free fall that much for the time it takes to get back up there. But I love the backwards drop, even after now 18 rides. The third and biggest pro is the tower, everything in it. The first drop is awesome, the lift is very comfortable and the backwards freefall is very unique and also good. You can see the beautiful tower from literally everywhere and I cannot say enough how incredible the atmosphere in the tower is. The third con is the track between the two air terminals. Not as intense as the rest of the ride and you are very slow in the morning. Let's end it with two more pros. First are the forces. Strong positive G's, strong laterals, ejector airtime and insane hang time. And the final pro are the night rides you can get on this ride during the autumn festival. In the night Canon has incredible pacing, you can see the inside because of the lights on the trains and riding a roller coaster in darkness is automatically more fun. It's not quite pitch black because of the thousands of lights spread around the park. But it's not a bad thing because on the hard element you can see the whole park glowing and you also can steer the dark ocean. For its final score I'm gonna give Der Spurtes Kernan a 9.75. And one last tip, rope dropping Kernan in the morning, you can do it, but you also could go credit hunting till Kernan's pacing is better. And don't judge this ride off your first rides. And now I wanna hear from you guys. Do you like Der Spurtes Kernan or do you think it's too rough? And how high is this ride on your ranking or on your bucket list? Comment below. Thanks for watching and don't desubscribe my channel.